Hello, Jonathan here, and in a change from our regularly scheduled programming, I have in inserted in, effectively, an answer uh, to a question, a very interesting question, raised by a fan of the series, of, of the Armouries, who I bumped into in the galleries. Um, I didn't get your name, apologies, but hello, and thank you very much for asking that question. I wasn't super pleased with my, with my off-the-cuff answer, so... Uh, I thought I'd take the, uh, the opportunity, because I don't think anyone else really covers this online. I hope I'm right. This is the, something that's come up before. Um, I remember wrapping my head around it years ago. So, um, the image that we showed over on Facebook and Instagram, for those of you who come to us through that channel, um, where we essentially set you a bit of a quiz. So we, we showed an image, cleverly cropped, or hopefully cleverly, of this. This is the... Uh, for, for many people, the the Webley Mark IV revolver. But as some of you will be aware, there's more than one Webley Mark IV. So this one was introduced in 1899. Um, uh, tw I had to look this up, but 21st of uh, July, uh, 1899, and became something of an iconic Boer War sidearm. It's in 455. So coincidentally, the two names were the same for the Webley commercial in-house designation of Mark IV. It was the fourth iteration of their military sidearm that they, that they had designed and were producing. And because it was designed and accepted, designed for and accepted by the British government, it was also the Mark IV of the military series. So the two names coincided. It was the Mark IV in the Webley catalogue, if you wanted to buy one, and it's the Mark IV in the list of changes when it's introduced in 1899, in July 1899. In fact, we just missed out by a couple of days of this recording of the um, anniversary of that date because it was the 21st of July 1899. Anyway, um, so that's only nine years after the Mark I Webley was introduced. So obviously Mark I, Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV. Um, so far, so easy to understand. And this series was a full-size service revolver the Mark IV, as adopted, had a short barrel, but it's a full-size frame, um, classic bird's head grip. It's 455 Webley, fairly lengthy cylinder to accommodate that cartridge. As I say, so far, so straightforward. Um, but it, the more reading, the more watching videos you do around this subject, the more you'll encounter the other Webley Mark IV, which is this. Very, very similar. In fact, you could probably play with scale and, and some clever um, camera angles and make this look uh, bigger. But you'll notice it is quite small. So if I hold them side by side, if we show them to you side by side in an image, it's in 38, or 380 in British terms. Therefore, a much shorter cylinder and a much slimmer, shorter uh, frame, vertically speaking. The barrel's actually longer because for um, uh, the, the, the military choice for, for the service version of this was for a longer barrel. So on the face of it, they both look like quite compact revolvers, but in theory, this is a full-size service revolver in 455. This is, in theory, a pocket revolver. This was developed from Webley's Mark I, Mark II, Mark III pocket revolver series. And that's why it's a Mark IV as well. So you can, you can look at it in terms of different calibers. Um, 455 from the 1899 version and um, 380 in, uh, well, I'm coming to that, but um, this, this caliber, this iteration of service revolver came in in 1932. So 1899, 1932, sort of, as I say, I'm coming to that. So just to clear up the answer to that question definitively, there are two Mark IV Webley revolvers because this is in the large frame series. This is from the small frame series. And it's just coincidence, albeit logical coincidence, that this shares Mark IV military designation with Mark IV commercial designation. Now, where it does get confusing is in what I was alluding to just now. So the revolver, the 380 revolver, pocket style, but long barrel, 
adopted in 1932 was the Enfield revolver, um, designed and produced at the Enfield, uh, the Royal Small Arms Factory at Enfield by Captain um, H.C. Boys. They then erupted a kerfuffle over legal rights because Webley saw this revolver, and perhaps that's for another day. Have a look online for some images um, of what I'm talking about. But long story short, the design was so similar that Webley sued the government. Um, lost, but the government paid them some money anyway, which is suspicious. And then, embarrassing for, embarrassingly for the government, the Enfield No. 2 Mark I revolver that had been adopted in 1932, Enfield couldn't make enough of. There was a war on, Second World War by this point. And so in the 40s, the government had to go crawling to Webley and beg for quantities of this, their Mark IV as I say, pocket revolver to supplement the very similar Enfield number no. two Mark I. Now, what, where it does get confusing is that this was officially adopted as revolver Mark IV, 380 inch. Um, it did not, it wasn't adopted under the number no. two Mark I designation because it was a different, different revolver, although it functioned identically um, and the same caliber, of course, same cartridge type. It was adopted under its commercial designation, which had no bearing on previous military designations. So the whole thing can get pretty confusing. So we can simplify it right down to, this is the Mark IV service revolver in 455, adopted as the Mark IV militarily. And this is the Mark IV pocket revolver, adopted militarily as the Mark IV 38 caliber revolver. Uh, that might be clear as mud, but uh, <laughs> if you, perhaps you might need a, a second watch to get your head around that. Uh, but I hope it's of interest nonetheless. Um, there are lots of debates, of course, about uh, 455 going down to 380, uh, 200 as it's often called, and was that a good move or not? Um, the Mark VI descendant of the original Mark IV remained in service as revolver number one when the system, the, the nomenclature system changed in 1926. So the Mark VI that followed this became revolver number one. The Enfield rival to this became revolver number two. And then the spanner in the works was this getting adopted as revolver Mark IV 380. And who said British military procurement was confusing? All right, guys, I hope you found that of interest. Uh, join us again next week for a more conventional episode in this series. Head over to GameSpot for some more uh, fun with games and guns and um, check out the description if you'd like to support us or visit us here at the Royal Armouries. Okay guys, take care.